Your attachment style is formed early in life, and now it affects your adult relationships. Do you know what attachment styles are? And more importantly, do you know what yours is? Welcome back to Savvy Psychologist. I'm your host, Dr. Jade Wu. Every week, I'll help you meet life's challenges with evidence-based research, a sympathetic ear, and zero judgment. Have you seen the show, How I Met Your Mother? It's about a bunch of flawed but lovable New Yorkers trying to find or hang on to love as they go through life's challenges, which range from silly to momentous. It's a funny, feel-good, and sometimes poignant sitcom. But what I like most about it is that it's a perfect showcase of human attachment styles. If you don't know what attachment styles are or haven't ever seen the show, don't worry. Once you hear about the characters and how they personify each attachment style, you'll be sure to recognize yourself or people you know. But first, what is attachment? Attachment is the bond we form with our first primary caregiver, usually a parent. It's a universal human phenomenon that starts as early as in the womb, and the way we develop it eventually affects the way that we find, keep, and end relationships. There are four major attachment styles that people form early in life and generally tend to keep into adulthood. These styles are one, secure, two, dismissive avoidant, three, anxious preoccupied, and four, fearful avoidant, also known as disorganized. To figure out what style of attachment you tend to have, there are quizzes you can take. They ask you to agree or disagree with statements like, I easily develop emotional ties to others. If a partner pushes me to establish a commitment, I freak out inside. Or if I'm not in a relationship, I am nobody. You can see that these items are probing the way we think of others and ourselves in the context of relationships and intimacy. So what attachment style do you think you have? Well, let's see if you most closely relate to Ted, Barney, or someone else from How I Met Your Mother. In this first in a three-part series on attachments, we'll let the beloved How I Met Your Mother characters guide us through the four major attachment styles. Before I go on, although How I Met Your Mother came to an end in 2014, which I cannot believe is six years ago, it lives on digitally. In case you're in the middle of your first How I Met Your Mother marathon, I should warn you that this episode contains a few spoilers for the show. So let's walk through the four types of attachment and the characters that personify them. So attachment style number one, securely attached. And this is Lily and Marshall. Lily and Marshall are the quintessential cute couple. They have quirky inside jokes. They have cute nicknames for each other, which are lily pad and marshmallow. They finish each other's sentences. But none of this cuteness overload explains why they're securely attached. When a person has a secure attachment style, they feel confident in their relationship and their partner. They feel connected, trusting, and comfortable with having independence and letting their partner have independence, even as they openly express love. They reach out for support when they need it and offer support when their partner is distressed. And this is where Lily and Marshall really excel. The relationship wasn't all puppies and rainbows for all nine seasons of How I Met Your Mother. There were times when they broke up, had family tragedies, worried about building their own family, and had awful fights that seem to shake the very foundation of their future together. But through it all, they fundamentally trusted each other, openly showed affection, sometimes enough to make you gag. They told each other their thoughts and feelings even when it was difficult, and they offered support when the other was sad and gave each other space when the other person needed it. This type of attachment style starts when early in life, a child feels that their parent is a secure base, so that even though they're happy to be with mom or dad, they also feel confident enough to explore the world on their own. K 
kids grow up this way when their parents themselves are securely attached people, and when they use an authoritative parenting style, meaning they are involved and firm, but also warm and allow independence. Given Lily and Marshall's own security and their loving style, I bet their kids will turn out to have very secure relationships of their own. Attachment style number two is dismissive avoidant. And here we're going to talk about Barney. Barney Stinson may have been one of the most legendary sitcom characters ever. His whole life and career was a mystery, and he certainly knew how to live life in the fast lane with his womanizing ways. And through his romantic relationships, we can see that he is the poster boy, or at least on the surface he is, for the dismissive avoidant attachment style. People who have the dismissive avoidant attachment style tend to be very emotionally independent, perhaps overly so. They find it uncomfortable to get too emotionally close to others or to fully trust them. In fact, those around them may describe them as actively trying to avoid closeness. They seem to pride themselves on not needing emotional intimacy, and when they're rejected or hurt, they tend to pull away. Although we see Barney with a lot of, quote, romantic relationships, they tend to be mostly one-night stands. He even has a system for getting rid of women the morning after seducing them because he doesn't want to get to know them or spend any more time than necessary with them. When we do get a glimpse of his vulnerability, like the time he finally gets to know the father that he never knew growing up, he immediately leaves the room when he feels hurt. And then he tries to steal the man's basketball hoop, which is not a very securely attached kind of way to solve problems. Barney's dismissive avoidant attachment style is quite understandable because the dismissive avoidant attachment style is associated with having had negligent or absent parents and generally having experienced rejection. Not only did Barney grow up without a father, but his mother was also dismissive towards him, even going as far as to casually lie to Barney that his father was Bob Barker from The Price is Right. And from flashbacks, we know that Barney was also rejected by his peers when he was a kid, and his first serious girlfriend also brutally broke up with him. But just because Barney acts like he doesn't need emotional closeness most of the time, that doesn't mean he truly doesn't want intimacy in relationships. Research has shown that even people who are highly dismissive feel happier and better about themselves when they feel accepted or when they anticipate having good relationships with others. And we do see this side of Barney shine through. He does end up cultivating a forgiving attitude and relationship with his father and even shows his willingness to commit to romantic relationships by getting married. Even though that marriage ultimately ends, we see him making efforts and potentially turning over a new, vulnerable, emotional leaf when his daughter is born. Now let's talk about attachment style number three, anxious preoccupied. And here we're going to talk about Ted. Have you met Ted? <laughs> He's the lovable hero and narrator of the nine season How I Met Your Mother saga. There are many sweet and admirable things about him, but sometimes the way he handled romantic relationships was a bit cringeworthy to say the least. For example, he can't help but say I love you within days of meeting someone. He made one girlfriend get rid of her dogs because they were inherited from previous boyfriends and he felt threatened by that. For someone who has an interesting career in New York City and great friends, he seems to be totally consumed by his search for the one. He's always easily falling in love, even in unhealthy situations. Not to mention that the entire nine seasons of the show builds up to him, major spoiler coming by the way, asking his own kids for permission to date a long-term love interest. <sighs> These are not just symptoms of being goofy, awkward, or a hopeless romantic. They actually point to Ted's anxious, preoccupied attachment style. People with this style tend to crave emotional intimacy even when their partner is not yet ready or the situation doesn't call for it. They need a lot of approval 
responsiveness and reassurance from their partners. They can get anxious when they don't get it. It's not fun to have this attachment style. Often, people like Ted feel dependent on others for approval and doubt their own self-worth. That's only reinforced when the target of their clinginess never seems to be as interested. Now, the fourth and final attachment style, disorganized, also known as fearful avoidant. And here we're going to talk about Robin. Before we get into Robin, my disclaimer here is that I don't think she is the only match or even the best match for the disorganized attachment style in the show. Barney and Ted are also good contenders, but their attachment issues even better personify the dismissive and anxious styles, respectively. So Robin goes through a lot, relationship-wise, through the years on How I Met Your Mother. She dates a lot of people who are not good for her. She rejects a lot of people who are. Sometimes she's going over the top to earn approval from a dismissive ex-boyfriend. Sometimes she's having a panic attack over gestures of commitment. And sometimes she's marrying someone incapable of commitment while having ongoing feelings for someone else who desperately wants it. Yikes. And this is why this style is called fearful avoidant or disorganized. A person with this attachment style is just confused. They essentially have both the dismissive and the anxious styles combined, both wanting emotional closeness and also pushing it away. They're fearful of fully trusting others, and yet they need approval or validation. They often deny their feelings or are reluctant to express them. At the same time, they're more easily jealous and tend to perceive greater threat from possible romantic rivals. It's hard to say where Robin gets this pattern from, though we know that she has an estranged or at least difficult relationship with her father, who wanted a son instead of a daughter and even gave her a middle name of Charles. In real life, people who have experienced loss or trauma are more likely to have a fearful avoidant attachment style. For example, children growing up with parents with alcoholism are more likely to be fearful avoidant. This makes sense because they live in an environment where security and closeness are just not guaranteed, and sometimes there is active harm coming from the person who should be taking care of them. These mixed messages lead to the fearful avoidant pattern of both reaching out and pulling away. So I definitely feel bad for Robin having inherited this type of attachment style. And we'll talk in more detail in part two of my attachment series. We'll look more closely at how attachment styles affect our current relationships in real life, including the way that we express love, feel jealousy, and deal with rejection. Meanwhile, you can find the content for this podcast episode on quickanddirtytips.com, where you can watch some video clips from How I Met Your Mother to showcase these attachment styles and to find links to online quizzes that you can take to figure out your own style. I'd be curious to see what you find, so let me know. You can also reach me on Facebook and Twitter at QDT Savvy Psych and at Jade Wood PhD. If you'd like psychology tips delivered straight to your inbox, subscribe to the Savvy Psychologist newsletter and subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Savvy Psychologist is audio engineered by Steve Rickyberg and edited by Karen Hertzberg. As always, Savvy Psychologist is strictly for informational purposes and does not substitute for mental health care from a licensed professional. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week for part two of the attachment series and for a happier, healthier mind. <laughs>